Hey, I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a program in Scratch that kind of resembles a sound recording program. So we're gonna start with a basic project and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a program that draws a wave that is a visual representation of how loud whatever we're saying into our microphone is going to be. This is a little bit different than if you went to Scratch and, and pressed record here and said, testing, one, two, three, something random like that. It's gonna look similar to that, but we don't have access to all the, uh, the data from our microphone. So we can't directly play what we record in this method, but we can make something similar to this and have some fun with it. So if you go back to code, I'm gonna delete my Scratch Cat by Scratch Cat. I'm gonna go down and make a new sprite and I'm just gonna leave it blank. And I'm gonna go back to the code and drag out from events a when green flag is clicked. And we need the pen tool. So you can find the pen tool by going to extensions down here in the bottom left and then up here, the pen tool. So that gives you the extra bit of commands that we need to draw on the screen. So we're gonna start with an erase all so that whatever was there from the last time we, re uh, we ran the program, it's gone. And then we're going to set our sprite to the left side of the screen. So we use a go to XY block from the motion and we're gonna say negative X is negative 240 and Y is zero. So it's gonna start on the left side of the screen. If you don't know, Scratch works on a Cartesian plane system, which means we talk about left and right as an X variable and up and down as a Y variable. So zero is the center of the screen in Scratch. X, if it's negative 240 X, um, we are on the left side. If it's zero X, we're in the center. So you can see this backdrop here is very handy for learning about locations and how things move in Scratch. So maybe I'll leave that up for now. So we're gonna go back to my sprite. We've set it to the left side of the screen and we're going to get a repeat loop. So if you go to control, we're gonna do a repeat 10. I'm gonna drag that out and we're gonna say repeat 480. And that is 240 plus 240, which is 480 is the length across of our screen. If it starts in the center and it's negative 240 to one side and it's positive 240 to the other side, well, that means it's 480 total. So we're gonna repeat 480 times and we're going to grab another go to block and we'll say go to. And if you go to sensing, we have a, a unique variable in here that's made for us called loudness. So take one of those out. We're gonna to need to make two variables. Loudness was made for us. If you go to variables, let's go make a variable and I will call it current X. It can be for all sprites. And we also need to make a list. And a list is a variable that can hold tons of things, tons of numbers and letters. It can hold multiple values in one list, like a grocery list or an inventory list. So we're gonna call our list the loudness list. And you can make that for all sprites and press okay. Okay, so because we're going to negative 240 X, this variable current X is gonna keep track of where we are in the loop of what our X value is. So I'm going to set this set current X to negative 240 and I'm gonna drag this at the beginning. So we've erased the screen, we've gone to where we need to go to start and we've set our variable. And every time in this, we go through this loop here, we're gonna change current X by one. And by the time this is done, our current X variable will be positive 240 because it has increased by 480 times. Now I'm gonna take this current x variable, I don't need this negative multiplier, and I'm going to put it in there. So go to current x, and we're gonna set it our y uh, to zero, and now we're gonna use our pen tool. So if you go to the pen tool, we have all these extra commands. I'm gonna do a pen down after I've gone to the location. I am going to draw, use the pen tool to draw upwards from the center and, and downwards, you'll see. And this, the distance that it draws from the center, from zero up or down, will be dependent on how much volume or loudness or amplitude is coming through your microphone. 
This will make more sense once we do it. So if I go to change Y by 10 and drag this out, I'm just gonna take this loudness variable and I'm gonna change Y by the loudness. This will work right now. If you press the green flag and then say something into your microphone, you may need to enable permissions in your browser to let Scratch use your microphone. Get ready to make some random noises, okay? Here I go. Bow, pew, whip, beep, 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 beep. You can press stop anytime. But as you can see, this drew some waves that are similar to a sound wave, that are similar to what we saw before in here. Now this is a lot rounder and, and prettier looking because it's actually recording frequencies and sound waves. This is just this is just volume level, but it will we can do some things to make it look similar. If I drew upwards. Well, I can draw the same value downwards just by going back to zero, zero and doing the same change Y by the negative value. After we've drawn upwards, we can go back, we can set Y to zero again, and then we can change Y by loudness, but we need it loudness to be negative. So we can multiply loudness by negative one, or we could just say, um, change Y by zero minus loudness. And that will go to zero and move down. Now that it's done both of these, if I press play, here we go, more random noises. There we go, some random jazz noises. Look at that. Now we got a, a, something that looks more like a sound wave. So what else can I do to this? A few things. If you've ever looked at an audio program, you can see it in Scratch too. If I press record, you'll see this bar on the left that shows you, gives you an indicator of how loud you are coming through your microphone. If I get really close to the mic and make loud noises, it gets up in the reds. If I get far away from the microphone or turn my volume down, it's, it stays in the green and stays too low. So, whoa, wow, wee, wee. What a fun activity. I just get to make random noises and you do too. Anyways, I'm gonna set the color to make it green when it's quiet and red when it's loud. So let's go back to the pen tool and we're gonna grab a pen up because we didn't add that in yet. And we're gonna put that above change current X. And that's just so it the pen isn't down constantly. So you may have seen at the beginning of the program, there was a line going back when I restarted the program. Uh, this will stop that. So now we're going to go to the set pen color and take one of those out. And we're going to put it above when the pen is down. And we're going to use a few operators here to get the right color. So we're going to need a minus and we're going to need a divide. If you take the loudness variable from sensing, place that in the negative operator. And we're going to say 100 minus loudness. And then we're going to put this in the divide operator. And we're going to divide by 2. What this does is it takes our loudness variable. And then it takes it away from 100 and divides it by 2. This is just some numbers that I figured out that gives us the starting color green. But now you'll see that it starts green if it's quiet. But if it's louder, it's yellow. And if it's really loud, it's red. It's hard to do that. So there you go. Look at that. So now we've drawn the wave. I'm going to get rid of our X, our X background here of our X, of our grid. Go to my costumes and just go to nothing. So that's all you need to make a program in Scratch that visually records what you're saying. If we wanted to play this back, it's complicated but there's sort of a way we could do it. So we made a list called the loudness list. And we are going to do an add thing to loudness list at the bottom of our loop. And we're gonna take our, our loudness from our sensing and put it in there. So add loudness to loudness list. So go to variables and say, delete all of loudness list, just so that if there was anything in there, it's empty now. So if you, if you press play now and check the loudness list, here we go. If you press go, you'll see it's recording a bunch of numbers that are all less than 100. That's the level that our volume was at at that time. Well, we can play it back in a way 
with a with an instrument. So I'm gonna go to the uh, back to the extensions, and then we're going to click the music extension to add that and we're going to add a few things so that an instrument can sort of play back what we recorded so now that we're adding our loudness level to a list we've added music uh we don't need to see the list so let's go to variables and, and hide that so make a new variable call it play count and make it for all sprites and we're going to need two buttons so if you go to the hover over the choose a sprite here you'll find some pre-made buttons let's take this green one here, and we're gonna call this the play button. And we're going to put that to the right, and I'm gonna go into the costumes, and I'm gonna take my text tool, make it black or something, and type play. I'm just gonna put that above or on it. There we go, that's my play button. I'm gonna duplicate this button and name this one the record button. Or short form, we're just gonna go REC, rec button. And if you go into it, make sure you're in the rec button and not the play button. Change this to REC, which is short form for record. And I'm going to click and drag this just so it's centered. I should do that with the play one as well. There we go. Nice and centered. And we're going to put the record button on the left side here and the play button on the right. So let's go into the play button. And all we have to do for this is go to when this sprite is clicked, broadcast a message and make a new message and call it play. And in the record button, same thing. We're gonna say when this sprite is clicked, broadcast a message, but we're gonna make new message REC or record and press okay. So back in our sprite, we're gonna take this when I receive from events, when I receive and we'll change it to record, we're gonna put our original code underneath that. So we don't we don't need to really put anything under under the start when this is when start is clicked anymore. So now this program starts when you press record rather than green flag. Now we need to code the play button. So we can start with a when I receive play and go to the music extension, which we've added from extensions, and set your instrument to whatever you want. I'm gonna pick trombone because it's such a, a majestic instrument. Many fine people play the trombone so I've made it the trombone you can make it whatever you want and we're gonna use that variable we made if you go to variables we're gonna go set and change this to play count and we're gonna set play count to one we don't want the play button to run when the record button is running so we can go to control go down to this stop all and change all to stop other scripts in this sprite. And that'll stop both of them from running at the same time and breaking. So the next thing we're going to do is we need a repeat. You'll see that when I've pressed record and stop at times, I can stop it whenever I want. So we need to repeat as many entries as there are in the list, as far as the recording got. So luckily there's a thing for that. Under variables, go to the list and say, repeat the length of loudness list. This variable here will have a number that'll be the same as how many entries there are in my list. So that's one of the really powerful pieces of a list that you can instantly tell how long it is and repeat for that many times. Now we just need to take a change variable and change play count by one just so it increases every time. And we just need to go back to the music find our play note and we're going to say play note. Here's where we have to feed some info into our list. Go to our variables, drag out a play count and drag out an item one of loudness list. Now drag play count into the item one, drag this into the note, then 0.2 beats, we could do that. We can make it smaller. You, you can play with this. But now this should be everything we need to have whatever we recorded played back in notes on a trombone. But it's, you'll you'll see. So try with this now. Ba, ba, whoa, wee, wee, bleep, bloop, okay. If I press stop, I have now filled my list full of variables of random noises. I'm gonna put my headphones on just so I can hear. But if you press play now, you hear really no low noises, because that's this. 
and then it's gonna get higher. Okay, we gotta increase the speed. It goes down. It's gonna... So I've pressed play, I've listened to this, but let's actually change this to 0.05 of a beat. Now if you press play, you will hear some really low noises at the beginning and then some higher noises and it'll get back down to low. So here we go, if you play, there's the low noise. It's not an actual recording of the noises I made. As I said, we're missing some data from our microphone. We can't access it in Scratch. So all we can do is really convert how loud, how much of an amplitude our microphone was taking in at that time and convert that to notes on a scale. So you could do this with also the volume um, if you wanted a, a more um, realistic representation of this. So it's kind of a goofy program, but it's it's kind of fun to play with. So let me know if you enjoyed that. Leave a comment if you want to see anything else. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the Scratch tutorial and hope to see you around for more. Happy scratching.